The defense wasn't really that bad, but Lincoln Riley's offense was pretty offensive to watch. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube, wherever you want to download your podcast, this show is always free. The show is always going to appreciate your support. Today's episode is brought to you by down by Game Time. Excuse me. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. So, fair comment. USC has won more games than they've lost since Lincoln Riley took over the program, mostly because of his offensive coaching prowess. Mostly, probably a combination of the ability to put points on the scoreboard as well as uh, having Caleb Williams running the offensive quarterback. Was that most was it mostly Caleb or is, or is most of it like a right combination of both, right? During USC's 27 to 24 loss to Michigan, can't say it. I hate saying it, but it's true. Lincoln Riley's offensive play calling. It was tough to watch. It was hard trying to figure out what was going on. I think the only thing that was harder than the, the offense on display, the officiating, probably the, that might have been the worst officiating I've ever seen since USC was a part of the Pac-12 conference. You don't have to go back that far. <laughs> uh, and then, if you know, you want to just put everything into one one big pile and toss it around. Um, so you had the play calling that just wasn't very appetizing. You had the officiating that was nauseating. And then you kind of had a little bit of a flashback to last year's USC's defense when, uh, tackling woes. Yeah. Remember those? They tackled so well throughout the game, except when they needed it the most at the end of the game. And you can add in, you know, two or three other plays throughout the game. Other than that, I thought the defense played fantastic. I've talked about this before. Talk about it again. I like boring football. I like, if, you know, if boring football means having to watch USC score points using the running backs and the tight ends, sign me up for it. I love boring. Michigan ran a boring offense. They didn't even use the tight end. If teaching an old dog new tricks is considered an impossible task, people will say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, then what do we call it when you're trying to teach a young dog, Lincoln Riley, clock management skills, how to be disciplined? What do you call that? For two weeks, Coach Riley, his coaching staff, they had the chance to prepare for the reigning national champions, right? Put together a game plan, lead with a victory. And they were the, they were considered the favorites heading into the game. <laughs> Every single person with those quote-unquote untrained eyes, knew what was necessary. Just make Michigan's quarterback throw the ball. Look, as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. What does that mean? It means even though you didn't intend for something to happen, stuff happens anyways, right? <laughs> I know Coach Riley had the best of intentions when he called his offensive plays. I know that. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to be cute or fancy or trying to show anybody up. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. However, there are times where I'm questioning his timing, his discipline, and, you know, putting the players in the best position to win. It kind of makes his words ring hollow, you know, after he hired Dan Malin. Remember when he said, whatever it takes to get it done from a development standpoint, from a staffing standpoint, from the way we practice, everything here is going to be done with a defensive mind first. The edge here is always going to be what's best for our defense. Okay, love it, love it, love it. Coach, the best way to help your defense is to keep them off the field. Situational football, right? USC had the lead, possession of the ball, clock was on Coach Riley's side, best friend, five minutes left in the game. 
it was a perfect situation to show everyone that you're learning how to use clock management. You're learning how to close out the game on the road. Not to mention displaying that quote unquote defensive mindset. Following the that 27 to 24 heartbreaking loss, infuriating loss. Um, Coach Riley, all he could offer up after the game was this. Yeah, I thought I could have been better. I don't think I called a very good drive there. Referring back to that time, you'll see on the ball, five minutes left. There's nowhere left for, there was nowhere left for him to hide. When it was time to show everyone that being young and being in charge of one of the best top football brands in America, best one of the blue blood programs in the country, that it wasn't too much to handle, I, I think Coach Riley stumbled a little bit. <laughs> Instead, you know, the, the questions are going to continue to linger, right? Is Coach Riley able to make in-game adjustments? Can he learn on the fly? Look, if we the, the Trojans defense in the second half, up until the very end, <laughs> really good. I mean, before that final drive, Michigan had, I think, 63 yards of total offense in the second half. But all of that went for naught. All of that went for naught because on USC's next to last drive on offense, Coach Riley found a new way to pave the path to hell. Instead of, you know, all USC needed to do was generate one first down. Two first downs for sure, game over. Michigan would be 2-2 two and two right now. USC would be still undefeated. Just run the ball. Eat up the clock. Make Michigan's head coach, Sharon Moore, Use his timeouts. I mean, even if the Trojans were forced to give the ball back, I don't think Michigan would have had enough, had enough time to use a running game to set up that winning touchdown drive. So again, while Coach Riley was in the locker room or talking to us, lamenting his decision, Coach Moore was loving it. Quote, I love it. I loved every minute of it. It's my dream to see it. He was talking about winning a football game with just 32 yards passing. They only threw the ball 12 times throughout the entire game. USC even had some luck on their side against Michigan. Their kicker, who's usually perfect, missed an extra point. That's why Michigan was in the situation at the end of the game to have to drive for a touchdown instead of setting up for a game time field goal. And despite some, I guess, as I mentioned, some of the worst officiating. Oh, yeah. But Charlie's team was still in a perfect position to win and do it the way Michigan does it. But he didn't. He chose to, instead of handing the ball off three times in a row, a couple of poor decisions. Remember on that sequence, they ran Woody right between the tackles. Two yards. And then on the next two plays, a screen pass and a shuffle pass. Both of them went to Woody. Both were incomplete. Both stop the clock. Michigan, get, Michigan gets to save their timeouts, and they only took fifty nine seconds off the off, off 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 the game clock total. I'll say it politely right now. LSU, excuse me, USC's offensive line didn't have a great game. Clear, concise, to the point. Let's also say though that Michigan's defensive line won the battle in the trenches, right? That's a fair statement. They won their one-on-ones way more than they lost. The Trojans gave up nearly 300 yards on the ground, but it wasn't as bad as that, even though Michigan, look, they had those three explosive plays that made up the bulk of those totals. That's it. But because of Riley's lack of faith in his run game and his clock management skills, Michigan didn't have to abandon what they do best, nor were they forced to throw the ball. And we saw what happened at the end of the game. <clears throat> See on the rundown here, we're gonna I'm gonna talk about USC's defense. They're they're close to being elite. You're like Mark, they gave up 300 yards on the ground. How's that possible? Let's talk about that in the next segment. Hey, NFL fans, start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you know when you get that hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page when you place your bets. 
You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Go do it. I, I think USC's defense is getting closer and closer to being elite. You're like, Mark, they gave up 300 yards on the ground. Okay, well, 49% of Michigan's offensive yards came on three plays in that game. Three. You have the 53, 53-yard touchdown run. You have the 41-yard touchdown run. And the uh, 63-yard run at the end of the game that set up the winning touchdown. Take that away. Michigan averaged 3.2 yards per carry every time they tried to run the ball. That's pretty good. And think, think about it this way. Michigan's three plays, 157 yards. Their other 43 rushing plays, 133 yards. Not bad. You make somebody run the ball 43 times and they're only getting 133 yards total, good job. And then again, reminder, 12 pass plays. That's it. USC's defense was excellent for 55 of the 58 offensive plays that Michigan ran. That's a really good percentage. I don't blame the defense for this loss. Not even close. Hey, yeah, I mean, those explosive plays, are they stand out like a sore thumb, like this migraine headache I'm, I'm dealing with right now. I apologize. But, hey. You know what? When you give up explosive plays, that's what people are going to remember. Look, I would have preferred, and I was screaming about it throughout the game, I tweeted about it, stack up eight in the box. Hell, put nine in the box. And even though they didn't do that, they still only gave up 20 points. Don't forget, you have the pick six for that seven, 27 points. And, you know, not only did they play good defense, but Michigan's offense was helped along with uh, friendly officiating. Because some of their drives were kept alive. You know, you had, uh, what, at least two delay of game penalties that did not get called. Pardon me. Did the defensive line win their battles more often than not? I guess it depends. You want to go look at play-by-play? Play, go figure it out yourself. I'll say this. I don't think they got to the quarterback enough. I'll also remind everybody that Alex Orgy, he's mobile. He's big. He's strong. A lot of times they had him for a tackle for loss. He got back to the line of scrimmage. We're going to see what kind of depth USC's defense has when Wisconsin comes to town this weekend. I bring that up. Because <laughs> Achille Arnold had to leave the game late. Uh, he was dragging that left shoulder, left arm. Looked like a shoulder issue. Bryson Shaw came in for him. I'm going to assume he's the next man up. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and let me let me get this out of the way. I really think the idea that Coach Lynn and Coach Belk have rotating eight to ten, eight to ten defensive backs in per game. It's a pipe dream. Let's 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 shelve that. Not that they don't have the guys that they can do it, but I think it's good to just stick with Jalen Smith, Jacoby Covington. They're playing fantastic football. Just let them settle in. I, I, I You don't rotate deep at the backs. On the defensive side of the ball, you rotate deep as a lineman. You, deep, you, you rotate in linebackers. Your DBs, they can handle it. They, they, they understand the flow. They're getting a read on the, on the wide receivers. Let them be. But I'll say it again. I think these guys are getting close. I think the defense is really close to being elite. Clean up those mistakes. You know, obviously, you know, you still want to keep improving with the tackling. It's a hell of a lot better than it was last year. There's no doubt about that. But there's still some spots where you're like, oh, no. Look, Kalel Mullings is one heck of a running back for Michigan. But he should not have been able to run through John Humphrey, 
run through. Kamari Ramsey took a bad angle. He kind of bounced off of him. There was a couple of missed gap assignments as well. I think Mason missed one. Uh, I know on that particular play he did. And then I also recognized uh, Easton Mascarenas Arnold. He had a he had a tough one also earlier in the game. I think the one thing the defense could do better also, create some more turnovers. But, oh, again, I don't want to harp too much. I, I thought the defense played a fantastic game. I Again, they didn't lose the game. We weren't even close to it. Dan Nguyen, the, that coaching staff has made a significant impact on that side of the ball. They have changed the culture. They're more fundamentally sound. Look at the way their gentry is playing right now. Tell me he's not one of the best linebackers in the country. Six foot six, 230 pounds on a good day. <laughs> but he's so long, he's so unique. He impacts the game in different ways. He was USC's leading tackler, 12, eight of those on the, of the solo variety. I think he had, what, three and a half TFLs, a sack. On the same play, you know, he forced the fumble, he recovered the fumble. He's a, he's a difference maker. You notice it when he's not on the field. When he is on the field, USC's defense is really good. I'd like to see him stick with that 4-3 more often. Make that their base. And with Wisconsin coming to town, why not? They're, not, again, another team without a good quarterback coming in. They're going to want to run the ball. So we'll see what they have in what happens uh, with Wisconsin. We're going to talk about that throughout the week. But I do. I wanted to give credit to the defense. Excuse me for a second. Need some water there. Because, again, you take out those three explosive plays, those 157 yards <laughs> on three running plays, they did really, really good. Can't complain about it. You, should, you shouldn't complain. For this game, all the finger pointing off the side of the ball. Maybe a little bit of special teams. In the next segment, I want to ask uh, which which position group has been the most disappointing through the first three games on the opposite side of the ball. Let's talk about that next. With killer last-minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, you know Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what you're getting when you arrive. All in prices, they're going to show your total up front. That way you know you're getting a great deal before you even check out. Buy your tickets in seconds. Two taps. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. But who wants to be late? It's the place to find last-minute seats. And you know me, that I'm going to remind everybody that game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you buy tickets in the same section in a row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So I don't think Miller Moss is the problem. I thought he played as tough as he could, despite having you know Michigan's defensive line in his face a lot. I hope he's okay. I'm sure he is. He'll be ready for Wisconsin on Saturday. But he was taking a lot of shots. The referees were letting Michigan take uh, have some liberties, face mask, twisting them again. Not going to complain anymore. But <laughs> that was hard to watch. Uh, wasn't Miller Moss. Running backs, they're only as good as the offensive line in front of them. So, most disappointing. Offensive line, wide receivers. On Saturday, the offensive line was not good. I, I mean, I'm being polite. They were not good. I mean, they had some good plays here and there, some good sequences here and there. Overall, Nothing to write home about. Not something I would want to brag about. It. Josh Henson, that's not something you want to put on your resume, right? But there's a lot of calls right now. Fan base are upset. 
they're they're not sure they're seeing the they're not sure they're seeing the development of the guys that he's recruiting, and they're not seeing the marquee guys, those elite guys committing. USC wins. We'll see if that helps them out. But right now, I don't think recruiting is Josh Henson's strong point. I like the guys he's brought in, but they're young. And those young offensive linemen take time to develop. And that's what they're dealing with right now. The offensive tackle spots, they're problematic. Right guard, problematic. So what? Now what? What did we do? What does that mean? Well, on Saturday, what they did in the second half is they took Mason Murphy from right tackle, put Elijah Page on the bench, and they put Tobias Raymond at right tackle. Mason took over at left tackle. They played better. They didn't look like they were getting it taken advantage of as much as they were in the first half. I'm not sure if there's really another solution other than just keep practicing and getting these guys up to speed. Don't forget, that was a really solid defensive line they're going up against. Mason Gray, Kenneth Grant, both are going to be playing on Sundays. I think Josiah Stewart will as well. Derek Moore probably also. Oh, footnote, I rode home on the plane with Mason Gray and his parents, great people. <laughs> Gave them a congratulations. Let them know. Well, I'm going to save my what I let them know for my Friday rant. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. I know I'm teasing you for a few days. But uh, I had a little conversation with a former Michigan offensive coach. Believe it. Anywho, <laughs> so that was the offensive line. They weren't opening holes in the running game as much as they could have, as well as they have in the past. Their pass protection was uh, I can give you their PFF grades, their pro football focus grades, but just know that they failed. They failed. I think zeros across the board in pass protection. Yeah, an F. Run run blocking wasn't even that much better. Wasn't close to being good. So we'll see what happens. They got a week to get better. We got another physical team coming in Wisconsin. We know their game plan is going to be pound the rock. We hopefully USC will be able to do the same. Keep uh, keep Wisconsin's defense on the field with Alex Grinch as a co-defensive coordinator. So that was the offensive line. What about USC's wide receivers? I think that's the other group right now that's underperforming, right? I, that's a fair statement, underperforming. I don't know, is Miller Moss a little bit too reliant on Kyron Hudson? Lake McCree? I don't think that's going to be a problem going forward unless Lake McCree has, you know, some incredible recovery, um, uh, incredible recovery abilities. You saw the, the shot he took to his knee. I don't know if he's going to play again this year. We haven't got an injury report yet. I don't know what's up with it. But it did not look good. But we're not seeing enough. Look, all right. Is I, I said he's he's being I kind of feel like he's self he's reliant on Kyron Hudson and the tight end. It's okay. I like the tight end when they're going vertical. But why is Zachariah Brams dropping so many passes? Why is Deuce Robinson not getting more targets after his touchdown catch in the game? Did he get another pass? Did he get another target? Jacoby Lane had the other touchdown pass. Are they using him enough? You know, like I'm, I don't. We don't get to see a whole lot of what goes on at practice, but I, I talked about it in my instant reaction. I uh, wasn't pleased. <laughs> I think the wide receivers need to do more. When you have the playmaker abilities of a Zachariah Brand, get him the ball in the flat. I don't want to see the tight end in the flat. Use him to take the top off of the opponent's defense. 
when you've got Deuce Robinson and Jacoby Lane and they're being marked one-on-one, -on -one, throw the ball out there, let them make a play. Give them a chance. I know it's hard when you've got the defense, you know, in your face. Two seconds after you get the ball from the from the center, nevertheless, the offensive line does their job, take some more shots down the field. I don't think they're doing enough of that. As I mentioned, Zachariah Branch had two weeks to stew after he dropped that touchdown uh, pass against Utah State. And even though he was the leading receiver against Michigan, uh, had some key drops. And I'm not trying to point the finger at him. It's the wide receiver group. But when you're considered, you know, the marquee guy, the guy who's supposed to make plays, yeah, you're going to be held to a higher standard. So I am going to bring you up. You guys, the guys just have to catch the ball. Keep the drives alive. Let the opponent's defense stay on the field longer. All right. This headache's really starting to kick in. So I apologize. This show's going to end a couple minutes earlier than usual. I will be back with another episode of Locked on USC tomorrow. We'll come at you five times a week. When you're done making Locked on USC your first listen every day, don't forget, head on over there to wrsc.com. Punch in that code fight on. You might get 50% off. We'll see. All right. Till that next episode, everyone. You know what to do. <laughs>